Soila. My name is Curtis. And this is the Soila and Curtis podcast. Yeah, so there's a question you guys have been asking us ever since 2017 and we've been ignoring you. But uh, not ignoring because we didn't want to address it, but because uh, we were trying to package it properly properly for you. Because you know us, you know how we do things. We don't just... We have to cook it nicely, we have to season it nicely, so that it makes a lot of sense. And uh, you guys just know, anytime you see Soila with makeup, that series is about to be <laughs> yeah. fire. Eh? Yeah. You see what our background is doing there? Yeah, it's It is fire. deliberate. This is yeah. fire. Yeah. Yeah, so, so we mm-hmm. want to mention mm-hmm. the people who have partnered with us to do this particular podcast today's episode and we have Amoyo mm-hmm. who did this beautiful makeup on me. Mm-hmm. So you can just check out Wamoyo makeup by Wamoyo on Instagram mm-hmm. and you hit her up for anything to do with makeup. Yeah. She's one of the guys who really does natural looking makeup. The one that I like and the one that the, the kind that Curtis really mm-hmm. loves. I also want to thank, uh, uh, I usually call him head of IT, <laughs> Mr. Edward Rodwimbo. So he came, he, he passed by as I was setting up and uh, he told me the cable that I need to use as I was putting up this podcast. Yeah. And he insisted that because of that, we have to put him in the credits. <laughs> So yeah, those are the mentions for our sponsors of this video today. So he has sponsored us with wisdom <laughs> of how to connect podcasts. Yeah. Uh-huh. All right. Yeah. So the topic we wanted to discuss is, uh, we call this the system or rather a system of abstinence. You look at me, not okay. then. He okay. Stop looking at the camera. Okay. Yeah. But we're also talking to them. Anyway, guys, we are getting used to this podcast <laughs> thing. So you'll see a you... few, a bit of squabbles here and yeah. there. Yeah, but anyway, so we are starting a series. It's called A System of Abstinence. Yeah, I think I'll enjoy this podcast. Yeah, because you get to look at my exactly. I knew it. I knew it. Make sure you focus. This is class. Anyway, so yeah, it's a series. Uh, I want eye contact. Okay. So it's a series of how to abstain because yes. a lot of people have been asking us hey how did you guys abstain yeah. did you guys wait yes. until you got married yes. and all that yes. and i was like i think it's time we need to talk about this yeah for if you've been following us you know that we've been talking about systems a lot and a system is basically a combination of laws or a combination of principles that work together towards an intended outcome so we decided to approach uh, uh, this uh, abstinence story with the systems perspective because a system abstinence to us is a system yeah. and i know there are many systems out there by which people have been able to abstain yeah. but for us you know you can only share what you know yeah so for us we are going to share what we applied yeah and what worked in for our us. life yes all right yeah so just a few misconceptions about first of all what is abstinence if i may ask you so guys, we have notes because we prepare well for these things. We mm-hmm. just don't want to throw information left, right, and center. Mm-hmm. And uh, abstinence is a self-imposed denial to indulge in something. Mm-hmm. And so it's a self-imposed It's denial. a self-imposed denial. denial yes. mm-hmm. So you have decided within yourself to yes. abstain yeah. from something. It could yeah. be food. Mm-hmm. It could be uh, showering. Mm-hmm. It could be anything that you decide entertainment Mm. but in this particular case since we are talking about abstinence we want to majorly focus on sex Mm. so this one is self imposed imposed denial denial good of sex so that is very important because uh, for some of you you are not abstaining what you are going through is just lack of opportunity all right to abstain means you have restrained yourself. In other words, if you want it, you know where you can go and get it. But you choose to restrain yourself and say, you know what, I will not. That is abstinence. But if you are trying to get it, but things are just not working for you, that is lack of opportunity. Yeah. So we need to get things right. Eh? So a few misconceptions that I would just like us to discuss about abstinence. Number one. Abstinence is not for teenagers, right? <laughs> yeah. 
Because most of the time when you hear abstaining, like how a total, mm-hmm. yeah, you a think we're just talking to teenagers and yeah. adolescents, yeah. but abstinence applies to everyone. Everybody. It applies to the unmarried and to the married. married yes. Because even in marriage, there are seasons where you'll be required to abstain. Yeah. For example, if your wife has just given birth, you can't expect to be humping things the next week. She has to wait. She yeah. has to heal. She has to go through the entire process of being okay. Yeah. And what will you be doing as a man during that time? Abstaining. You'll be abstaining. Yeah. Or if your spouse gets a job abroad and they have to go for this two or three months uh, gig, what will you be doing those two or three months? You'll be abstaining. True. Or if one of the spouses is unwell and they are not in a position to be able to indulge in such you'll be abstaining. True. Or for those of you who are Christians like us, they are every once in a while you'll be required to fast. Right? And the Bible commands us, or rather it instructs us that when you're fasting, consult with your spouse so that you know how far, how long you'll be fasting and uh, whether that fast will involve sex, sexual yeah, activities. activities. Alright? Yeah. So abstinence is not just for the unmarried, it is also for the married. Yeah. depending on the season that you are in marriage. Yeah. Any other misconception that you may have? Abstinence does not make you a better person than the person who's not abstaining. Because hmm. it gets to a place where there are those people who really, and I know, mostly in university, when yeah. the conversation of sex yeah. is such a hot topic, mm-hmm. and let's say men are comparing themselves to, how much, they're saying, compared to the each other, counts. yes, the body counts, and they'll be like, ah, me, I've not, me, I've not, I've slept with 21, I've slept with 10, you know, and it's a measure of masculinity, we slept with so many, mm. and then there's that one who has probably not slept, gotten probably that opportunity to sleep mm. <laughs> with somebody, mm. And they just make it such an idol. Mm. And they now look at themselves as a better person mm-hmm. than the one who slept with people. Mm. And that's not the case. Mm. It shouldn't make you feel better mm-hmm. than the person who has already mm. um, had sex. Good. If you do that, then you become, you're in a place of idolizing mm. the, the aspect, the abstinence, the virginity. Itself, the virginity. Yes. You can say, oh me, I'm a virgin. Every statement you open in a church, I'm a virgin. Mm. Every statement you open to the friends, I'm a virgin. You know, it mm. just, you, you idolize it so much. Mm. And there is a lot to do with abstinence than mm. just the activity of staying away from mm. sex. Mm. There's a mental thing. We're going to go deeper into mm. some of this, this conversation. Mm-hmm. But if you've, the Bible says, if you've fallen, if you've already looked at a woman you've already thought you're as good as done. As, yes, you're yeah. as good as done. You've already seen, you've desired to commit murder. Mm-hmm. Does the Bible say that? Not murder. Mm-hmm. But if you've looked at a woman mm-hmm. lustfully, mm-hmm. then it's as good as you've done the, mm-hmm. the deed. So you're not better than the person yes. who has already done it. Yes. That's it. That's yes. the point. The fact that you're a virgin and virginity is good. Yeah. The fact that you're abstaining, and abstinence is good, that's yeah. why we're doing this series. Yeah. But the fact that you're abstaining doesn't make you a much more valuable human being than those who are not. So let me just say a statement here. God did not call you to be a virgin. To be a virgin. Yeah. God did not call you to abstain. Yeah. God called you to be holy. Holy is an umbrella statement. Right? That... In other words, if you're abstaining, or you are a virgin, but your heart is far away from God, you've missed the point. Yes, you have. All right? Yeah. Please don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that we should not abstain. Abstaining is good, and we'll see the benefits as we progress with this series. But you need to understand that the whole point of life is to be holy. Yes. All right? Yes. And you just, what Soila said, you know, you can be, you can idolize your, your, your abstinence. Eh? Your virginity. Yani, 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 just of, you know, until it becomes a source of identity for you. It becomes... An idol, and one, the the signs, <laughs> and, and one of the signs, and one of the signs, one of the signs that you have an idol in your heart is pride. Oh yeah, pride and a self-righteous, judgmental attitude, which is also something I saw a lot in, in in university, where people who have managed to keep themselves would look down on others because they think I am better than you. True story. All right. Yeah. So that's another misconception that we need to get out of the way. Yeah. Another misconception is um. You are not abstaining because sex is bad. Yeah. On the contrary, sex is a good thing. Yeah. It's a really good thing. I mean, some of you, you are watching me, you've had it. You're not married. <laughs> and it was good. <laughs> so you know it is a good thing. Yeah. But the problem with sex outside of marriage is that the only benefit you have is physical pleasure. Yeah. There are many other pleasures of sex that are only within the confines of marriage. Yeah. You cannot experience them outside. Yeah. 
right? So you are not abstaining because sex is a bad thing. It is a good thing. But like every other good thing, there is there's a time and a place for it. Yes. Oops. And uh, do you know? Do you know every good thing, if abused, can end up destroying you? Yeah. All right. The thing is not the problem, but the manner in which you mishandle it yeah. can end up working yeah. to your disadvantage. Yeah. yeah. And sex is one of those things. Yeah. Anyway, so those are just some of the misconceptions that I wanted us to get out of the yes. way. So now to the meat of the story. Remember, we say this is a system of abstinence, so which means there are specific laws. There are specific principles to carry within this system so that you achieve the abstinence, so that you achieve the benefits of abstinence. All right? Now, a little backstory. I don't know, should I give them my backstory? What's your backstory? A little backstory so that you know that um, uh, some of the things I'm going to talk about is not just textbook, it's personal experience. Yeah. Um, before I met my wife, I was active. Yeah. All right? I was, I was active yeah, in other... In uh, other areas. In other areas. <laughs> I, was, I was active before. But, uh, and it's something I kept struggling with. I wanted to get out of that lifestyle. I wanted to adopt a lifestyle of abstinence, but it was a struggle for some time. Yeah. And uh, it just got to a point where I was like, God, you know what? I really want you to change me. You know, and it's around the same time that I met my wife. And when we met for four and a half years, the entire period of dating, we abstained. Yeah. We were never active. Yeah. We were just good old uh, dating people until the day of our honeymoon, mm. which is when we decided to, you know, mm. do what we are supposed to do. So as I share on these principles, as I share on this system, I'll be giving you personal experience and personal examples of what we applied that enabled us to actually uphold the life of abstinence. Yeah. All right. And some of the things that uh, were an issue before I met Soilai in the other lifestyle that I had before. All right? Yeah. So number one, Soilai, if you care to share, what's the first law that we applied? Conviction. Mm -hmm. And I think the question that we can pose to the people is, what is your conviction? Mm -hmm. A conviction is one thing that drives you to probably follow through mm -hmm. with a particular principle or a particular law. Mm -hmm. Or a particular task mm. so what has made you mm. choose mm. abstinence mm. over being sexually active mm. um, and if you have conviction I'll say if your conviction is not because of the love of God mm -hmm. because of pursuing holiness mm -hmm. and if your conviction is to wait if your conviction is to I want to be those people who are called virgin before I got married that's a wrong thing it mm. can easily be shattered mm. but if you pursue relationship with god over everything else mm -hmm. and pursue holiness over these other things mm. and say my conviction is actually to be a better son to god mm. having a perfect not really a perfect but a good relationship mm. with my father in heaven mm. then there is all possibilities mm -hmm. that you're going to make it through mm -hmm. yeah now, the, the convictional thing is very important because I remember, and I'm sure a lot of them have also experienced this, if you're, if you're, if you're, in the, if you're the kind of person who you are active but you're trying to live an, a, a life of abstinence. So there was this moment where you're like, you've set up your mind, I'm not going to do this, and you've decided. And then the next minute. And then something happens and you are like, ah, oh, why did I do it? And then there's this turn of guilt that now you have to deal with, there's yes. this turn of shame that now you have to deal with. And during that period, I came to realize that fear is the worst conviction you can have. True. And I think sometimes, unfortunately, religion tries to scare people into abstinence. Oh, yeah. It, it tries to scare people into doing the right thing, yeah. you know. Yeah. And uh, I remember when you were in high school, there are these people, I don't remember what that organization was called. It was both for HIV and AIDS. So they would come to schools and they would show us very graphic images of people who've died yeah. with STDs Doing. and STIs. Oh, yes. And cigarettes people, and cigarettes yeah. and people would be scared and they're like by the way this is it i am never having sex again i'm never doing drugs again. until we go home for holiday and then when we come back the next time you hear the stories people are sharing and you're like kai i thought you decided yeah. you know because fear fear is not really a conviction fear will just scare you for some time yeah the bible tells us that it is the kindness of god that leads people to repentance, repentance. it is not the fear of punishment yeah. 
it is not the fear of punishment it is the kindness of god that leads to repentance and for me that was such a reality because the thing that really made me make up my mind is the realization of how much god really loves me just dawned on me and i was like what yani god even when i was living my life like this you hadn't really turned your back on, on me. me you are still trying to pursue yeah, me yeah yeah and that love completely just changed my heart and 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 when you remember the story of the adulterous woman who was caught uh, at, in adultery now the religious leaders were trying to find a punishment be, uh, for her they wanted, for to, her. They wanted to beat her to death yeah. you know yeah. which which i think i think one of the reasons they wanted to do it publicly was because they wanted it to be an example to other people be fearful never you, if you ever you caught see? in such yes they wanted to, to it was a scare fear. tactic mm. for other people True. to live a life that is not adulterous yeah. but then jesus comes and what does jesus do jesus doesn't condemn her no jesus doesn't even talk about her sin yes jesus just comes and shows her love yeah. now guess which of the two actions changed her heart I think the love that the love of Christ. Honestly the love of Christ right. spared her. Yes. It is that yes. love that transformed her. It yeah. is that love that changed her. Yeah. And for me that's such a reality. For so if you're struggling with this thing and you're like I really want to abstain but I keep on falling and you've gone through the, the fear thing and the guilt thing and all that. Please understand it is the realization of God's love that will really really truly change you. Truly change. It yeah. is the conviction. Yeah. It's not the, that the judgment that comes with the world if mm-hmm. you've fallen the judgment that comes probably in the body of Christ mm. if you've fallen and there's a certain look that people give they that have fallen into mm. sexual sin mm. there's a correctional process that people go through if you fallen through into sin and you let's say you're in a leadership position mm-hmm. and if your church is a, have proper structures mm. there's a process you'll be taken through you won't be chased out of church mm. it's something different if you're a habitual sinner mm. it's something different if you're a habitual person who keeps on falling and mm. having sexual intercourse mm. that there's something wrong mm. but if let's say it's a once in a while and you truly truly want to pursue the abstinence mm. side of things and just being celibate there are there are process of of of, of what do you call it reinst- reinstating mm-hmm. You know, that word bringing you back yeah. to that place of actually working ho- working in holiness mm-hmm. and they shouldn't they shouldn't be fear mm-hmm. they shouldn't threaten your position mm-hmm. they shouldn't threaten your sonship position in mm-hmm. that church mm-hmm. your capacity just mm-hmm. because you fell mm-hmm. love is the one thing as Curtis has said love covers a multitude, multitude of sin, of sin. Yeah. if anything it can just be a conversation between you the person who you you slept with mm. and your pastor or the person who's working with you mm. and it shouldn't be i know people who actually stand on the pulpit and announce Curtis slept with person b and na 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 as in you are made to be so ashamed mm. of what you did and i know it's something to so that somebody else may not yeah fall into that sin yeah. and you know what that does yeah. if i fall into sin i will never You'll die with it yes. i will die with it yeah. and you see how now we are falling out of yeah the restore ah, and the word was restoring mm. the restorative work of the cross and mm. the love that christ gave us mm. to be able to share with one another mm. and be gracious with one another because yeah. One day you are the one who's probably having sex. Yeah. The following day I might be caught in something else probably that is not sin. And again mm. in the Bible mm. there's no sin which is greater than the other. Mm. You know there's just love of God just creates such a balance yeah. when it comes to things to do with life. Yeah. yeah. Good. Good. So as I lead on to the next law or the next principle in this system, is it possible for me to love God? and even have a relationship with God but i still fall into this thing oh it's possible it's possible it's possible good because remember this is a system now the thing about system is that you have to apply all the laws yeah if you just apply one law and you disregard the others the system is not going to work in your it's favor faulty. all right so loving god the realization of god's love for you that is just one of the principles there's an there's another principle I want us to talk about so See you that on our next episode. Cheers. Okay, let's do a close up. Let's do we need to have a closing link on all the videos on. Mm. Have you had podcast so we have to do a closing. There's an opening link that is common. Mm-hmm. Welcome guys to today's podcast. My name is Soil and this is Soil and Katis podcast. Okay. And then introduce so this is how we need to find a way of closing. Mm. Uh, yeah. So press something like
Thank you and, so much and, guys and, for listening. And, and, and also remember we have to talk about Patreon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Sawa. Thank you so much guys for listening and uh tuning in. So you you sasa it na turn. Oh no 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 no, it's like but this is an audio. Okay. This is an audio. Mostly it's an audio. People who want to watch video will watch. But it's mostly podcast is audio. Mm. We can do an, another for the video but mm. take two. Mhm. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode of Soil and Cartes podcast. We really hope you are edified and that you are what can I say? Edified and enlightened. Yes. Thank you so much guys for listening in and tuning in to today's podcast. Ah, oh, thank you so much guys for oh, take three. Thank you so much for listening in to today's podcast. Oh, no. Take it so <laughs> take four. Thank you so much. Thank you so much guys for tuning in to today's Soil and Cartes podcast and we hope today's topic enlightened you and edified you in many ways. I felt I was dragging it. You try it. Thank you ladies and gents. Don't overthink no, no, no. it. You see these are you overthink it. No, I'm not thinking. All right. Thank you guys for tuning in to Soil and Cartes podcast. Uh, I hope whatever you learned today was edifying and enlightening. So tune in to our future episodes as we continue unraveling some of these topics that are really really paramount in our everyday life experiences. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> so well done. So um to our Patreon members, thank you so much for being part of this family. We continuously appreciate you. And they that want to join the Patreon family, oh no. No, no, no. To our Patreon members, thank you so much for being part of this family. We will continue turning out content to you people, for you people. For you, eh? Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to our Patreon family. No. Thank you so much to the Patreon members. We will continue churning out. No, no, no. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much to all our Patreon members. Thank you for being part of this family. We appreciate you and we'll continue churning out content. For you guys in the future and for those of you who are not patrons you've probably come across this on youtube and you want to know how can i be a patron for these guys how can i support what these guys are doing just go to patreon.com and uh, search for soila and katis you'll find us there we have uh it's, it's more of a page you'll find our page there you'll find the different tires that you need to join depending on the kind of context and content that you want <laughs> I do it again okay. and, it so well. and for those who are not patrons you've probably come across this video on youtube and you want to know how can you be a patron to soil and cartis how can you access our page on patreon just go to patreon.com search soil and cartis you'll find our page there uh you'll find a brief info or introduction of what exactly we are doing on patreon and you'll also find different tiers of how you can be able to support us based on the kind of content that you are looking for. With all that said, you can also follow us on all our social media platforms. We are basically on Instagram, Soila and Cartes. You can follow Soila myself at Soila Cartes. You can follow Cartes also on Instagram at Jimmy Cartes. Yeah, so guys, Cheers. have a good time till next time. Bye. Let's say that together, guys. So, so guys, guys have, have a, a good, good time till, till the next time. time. Oh, wait, have a good time till the next time. Till no. the next time. No, it, it sounds bad. Uh -huh. Hey guys, have have a wonderful time till we meet next time. Okay, have a wonderful time till, till we meet. Okay, time. together. Three, two, one, go. Guys, guys have, have a wonderful, wonderful time, time till, we till we meet next, next time. time. Cheers. Then I'll like a jingle. Too. <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 what jingle should you use? <laughs> Especially <laughs> abstinence. <laughs> Oh, we are just getting on. No, we're not getting well, it on. That's that's Let's conflict not. of interest. Yeah, it is. It's we're cool. telling people to abstain and then we are getting it on. <laughs> Let's talk about sex, sex baby. baby. Let's talk about oh, you okay. and me. Let's talk about I'm all the good stuff. After your intro, me. Hmm. Intro to the summer. You give me the sweetest taboo. taboo. <laughs> Such a taboo. <laughs> anyway. Such a taboo.